The initial underwriting approval is most likely going to have conditions. What does that mean to you as the individual trying to get a home loan? Uh, let's talk about that and what it is and what to expect. So first and foremost, think of an underwriter like a teacher. Like let's, uh, we've done our homework. We're now turning it in. And the underwriter is going to be the person that validates uh, that everything we've done and that, you know, we put together is, is meets the check boxes of what we're supposed to have. It then, you know, meets all the guidelines for the program we're trying to get approved for all those fun things. So in other words, the underwriter is going in there and said, Hey, you got a 90% on your test. And now we need these last 10% of things. So in truth, um, an underwriter is going to be the one that's just sitting there, just making sure that the team up front has done their job and put together a really good file. Uh, in our case, the mortgage mark team, we don't have a lot of conditions. Inevitably, there will be some. Some we expect. Uh, some are kind of standard. They come back all the time. Uh, but ultimately, we try not to have a whole lot of conditions that come back for, that involve you, the homeowner. Uh, we are really good at kind of predicting what they need. There are instances where, as you can imagine, there's um, just this gray area for what, you know, not every situation, as much as we'd love it, would be just so cookie cutter. Every loan is going to be unique. Every loan is different. Uh, the different products and programs and guidelines make it to where it's really hard to anticipate everything. And so sometimes we may think they want something, but we may try to get, uh, I don't say get away with it because that's not the right word, but we may submit something to see if they truly ask. We're not trying to create more work for you or for us. So that's what underwriting is. It's, it's the underwriter going through, kind of doing the initial pass and say, here's what it looks like. And that typically can happen, I'd say in normal, air quotes, normal mortgage market. Once a processor submits something to underwriting, it could take anywhere from two or three days to four or five days. And when business is really booming and everybody's really busy, uh, it could take a week or two. Um, when business is really slow, it could take a day. But I would say generically, if you asked me and called me up and says, hey, what are underwriting turn times? And a, most of the time, I'd say that 80% of the time, it's about two or three days before an underwriter looks at a file. So that's kind of just normal, right? Every company's gonna be different. Uh, every market's going to be different. Every loan is going to be different. So for example, uh, some underwriters will only underwrite these type of loans. And so if there just happens to coincidentally be a lot of folks submitting files on that day, then you got to wait in line, wait your turn. So that's what underwriting is. The initial underwriting approval. This is when the underwriter looks at the file for the first time. They go through and say, here's what's needed. As I kind of alluded to, they're going to cross-check that to the guidelines of the investor, whether the investor is Fannie Freddie uh, maybe it's FHA, maybe it's VA, maybe it's uh, what's called a non-QM loan. Um, they're going to go through and just look at all those things and then give you a list of homework or conditions. And so these conditions, some of them could be our homework from the lending side. Some of them could be homework for third parties, and some of them could be homework for you, the home, you know, potential home loan person, uh, the borrower. So us, it might be like, hey, we saw you know, we need, you know, this third party or that third party. We need the appraiser to update the address from, you know, 123 Main Street to 123 uh, Main Drive, right? I mean, that it is that little that technical. So it's all these little things that it takes. And so that's the initial underwrite that says, okay, here's your homework, your conditions. And then once you satisfy those conditions, you then get what's called a clear to close. And the clear to close is basically saying you've, congratulations, you completed all your homework, you now have a hundred on it. Um, so that's really what it is. And then after that initial underwriting approval, in most cases, not always, and, and every lender can be different. So this is something else to say. You're going to get what's called your initial closing disclosure. Um, ICD is what the industry calls it. But a closing disclosure, the final closing disclosure, which is different, same form, but almost the same form, rather. The closing disclosure is what you're going to sign at closing. That's whenever that happens, that's what you're going to sign that tells you to the penny, all the, you know, all the terms and all the, the cost of the loan. So that's what you're going to sign. But the initial CD from our side will at least get ordered after we have that initial approval. Um, so it's also worth noting that once the underwriting has done their initial approval, we really, 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 really encourage you and we will reach out. But ultimately, please help us. Right. If there's any changes where there's contract addendums or contract amendments or anything of that nature, please make sure that's also provided. And then be aware that after the initial approval, you know, once we get the conditions and we submit those, there may be various lenders, various programs, maybe updating your credit report. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean they're pulling a new one, but they may be peeking in there. So please let us know if there's anything that you, you know, don't go buy new cars, don't go buy new, you know, all the new fun appliances until you've checked with us. 
But realize this is about that time period in the process where credit report may get looked at again. Uh, they may be reaching out to your employer to verify your employment, to make sure you're still employed, you haven't quit or anything like that. And then once we have all those conditions, we put them all together and we submit it in a nice bundle and bow, we are submitting for that clear to close. That's where they could the CTC, where we're basically saying, hey, here's our homework and please grade us for the final test, if you want to think of it that way. So that's what the underwriting uh, initial underwriting approval is. That's what uh, conditions are. And certainly if you have questions, reach out to us and um, ultimately we'll help you navigate this process. But it's not big and scary because by this point we should know um, if we're good or not good. I mean, that's why we're really good at what we do. We've done this for over two decades. And we've got a great and wonderful team. So usually these conditions are pretty minimal, pretty minute, pretty ticky tacky. And that's a good thing. That's what we want. So if you have any questions, as always, reach out to us. You can, you know, show there's links and all the way to get us here. But uh, as always, when you think mortgage, think Mark.